Hello, my name is Nathan and you're watching Robot Masters. This channel is all about providing you guys daily updates on cool robot vacuums like the Nido D7 here. And I've been doing a lot of cool challenges. We got a giant bag of Skittles. I've been asked by a lot of you, hey uh, Nathan, can you go ahead and do individual testings of all your robots? I'm like, of course, let's go ahead and do it. So the first video, we got the Nido D7. We got a basic obstacle course behind me. And we're going to place down about 10 Skittles on the ground and we'll see how many Skittles the robot can pick up. So stay tuned for this awesome pickup test. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, count out 10 Skittles. Actually, you know what? Let's do more. Let's do 20. Alright guys, there you go. There is 20 Skittles in there. Okay guys, here it is, the Nido D7 in action, running the obstacle course. This is Nido's latest and greatest robot vacuum current to date. They also have other ones, the D3, the D4, the D6. They all vary in app capabilities, filter performance, and battery life. So, this D7 is really smart. You can see it's getting hung up on the chair leg, but it's no problem. It just will do a quick spin, and it is good to go. You may already know that the Nido D7 navigates with a spinning LiDAR sensor on top. It's the little dome that you may notice. Well, Nido was the first company to incorporate this technology in its robot vacuums. Notice that green arrow over there? Well, let's see if the D7 is smart enough to maneuver this bar stool chair leg. No problem. I owned a BotVac 80 and it would always get hung up. The D7 also has a very unique sensor called the wall sensor. It's very similar to the Roblox S5 and S6. This allows the robot to get super close to the baseboards without really bashing into the baseboards. This allows that small side brush to do its job and get the dirt away from the baseboards. We'll go ahead and see how well it performs. Wow, we got so many different types of robots out there. We got circular robots, square robots, triangular robots, robots that sit up tall, like the Dyson Heroes. We got robots that are really flat and slim, like on the iLife series. We have so many different types of robots and shapes. It's kind of hard to keep track of all of them. And of course, these shapes have their pros and cons. So let me know down in the comments what type of robot vacuum shape you prefer. So, the Nido D7 is one of the most slowest and methodical cleaners. It's very gentle and is great around furniture. Now, notice this little spinning flickering on top of the dome. Yep, that is the LiDAR sensor calculating how far away objects are in real time. When you film robot vacuums, the camera themselves actually can pick up the laser light. This is actually invisible to the human eye, but towards the camera, sensor it will pick it up it's especially noticeable when running these robot vacuums in dark later down the road i will definitely upload a video of these lidar sensors running in the dark and you guys can see how cool these lidar sensors are okay the moment of truth how well does the side brush work and the wall sensor it does look to me that it is trying to get really close to the wall and uh, it missed the first orange skittle. Let's see if it got the yellow one. No, it missed the yellow one and it missed the green one. Hmm. Maybe Nido should include a larger side brush in its next lineup. I do like that the wall sensor is working. It is leaving a nice gap, but it might be leaving a little too much of a gap between the object and the wall. Keep in mind that this seal was purposely chosen for this test because I wanted to give it a very odd shape and see how well these robots can maneuver this 
odd shape. The Needle is a somewhat quiet robot vacuum. It's not the quietest one I owned, but it's not the loudest like compared to the Roomba S9. It runs around 67 decibels on high power and around 64 on low. There's only two power settings on a Needle D7. So once the Needle D7 finishes its perimeter sweep, it will then try to fill that area up with a back and forth cleaning pattern. It's very similar to what the Roborox do. Alright guys, moment of truth. How well is this LiDAR sensor? It is done with its perimeter sweep. Now it's going to try to fill in the area for the back and forth cleaning pattern. On my bought back D80, it would get confused if there's too many objects in the room. It would just kind of spin around and not know where it's at. And it would ultimately give an error saying it cannot relocate. Well, hmm, looks like the needle's kind of spinning around there. Are you confused there, Needle D7? Um, you know that you have to fill in the areas, not just spin around a few times. Hmm, this isn't a good sign. Hopefully you can figure out where you're at. Oh, good. I think you know where you're at now. Well, that was a sign of relief. I was really worried that the Needle D7 was going to get confused because if it got confused on this simple obstacle course, I can't imagine something that had a lot more chairs and table legs and other random objects. So I have only owned a D7 for about a few days now, and the only thing I can tell that needs improvement is the side brush. Off to the left, I highlighted in circle some of the skills I put along the baseboard. If it had a larger side brush, I'm pretty sure the D7 would be able to pick up those skittles, because it does get fairly close to the baseboard within an inch or so. Now with the seal, the D7 did leave additional space because the object is convexed around the edges. This makes it extremely hard for a robot with a very small side brush to get these skittles. I did that on purpose because I want to see if the needle can get to these skittles. Okay, so it's almost done. It's just filling in the areas and we'll see how well the D7 stacks up to its similar shaped brother, the Roomba S9. Did you hear that little chirp? That means that the Needle D7 has finished its cleaning run and is trying to go through those doors because in its map it's showing that these doors are open. But fortunately, the algorithm does allow for multiple paths, so the robot is going to go down the hallway and try the other doors. Like in my situation, I have a room that has doors on either end, so it's important for the robot to be able to recognize when these doors are closed and when these are open so they can efficiently go back to their charges. Alright, so what do you guys think of the Needle D7? Are there any Needle D7s out there or any other previous model owners? Let us know in the comments what you guys think of the Needle brand. Okay, we're going to check out and see how many Skittles the Needle D7 picked up. Um, I would say it kind of got confused in this little obstacle course. It kind of spread around a few times, but overall, I think it did a fair job. I will be doing individual testing of an open area as well. Just of uh, just putting a bunch of skills on the ground in the open area and see if the fins get full, what happens with these robots. I would love to see what happens when the bin gets full because the robot does not have a bin full sensor like my other robots do. So I'll go ahead and do that test as well. So let's check out how many Skittles the Needle D7 picked up? So it looks like there's nothing. Huh. I wonder where all the Skittles went. Let's check them out. Yep. Looks like they somehow got caught up inside the extractor. Oh, it looks like nothing got inside the dustbin. It actually all got kind of stuck inside this extractor. It hung up inside this brush roll here. So if I open up this brush roll, one cool feature is the side brush is magnetic. There's no set screw here. You just basically put it down and it's held on by a magnet. Real nice feature. And let me show you what's happening here. You see that guys? All the Skittles got locked up in here. 
So it looks like we picked up one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight Skittles out of 20. So keep in mind that I will do an other test as well. I do do daily videos. So I have a lot of days to do different types of testing. I just wanted to see how well the Neo D7 did with an obstacle course. Okay guys, did you enjoy that test? I was the first robot vacuum I tested with my no obstacle course. I placed down 20 Skittles around various objects which I knew robot vacuums would struggle with. The Neo D7 did okay. It did struggle a little bit with the obstacle course. Kind of got hung up on the chair legs due to its D shape. That's something I wanted to show you guys because sometimes D shapes, even though they have a nice large extractor design, they do sometimes get hung up on furniture. That's the same thing that goes with the Rupa S9. I noticed that the corners kind of get hung up. So if you have a lot of furniture, I would recommend going with the round robot because they tend to get less hung up. The Neo did get confused at one point, kind of spun around for a bit, but it did complete the task, it did cover all the areas. So due to its kind of design, it wasn't able to get the Skittles inside the dustbin, but it just kind of get all lodged up inside the extractor housing. Um, I'm going to test it with my other robot. I'll do the exact same test. I'll have the same obstacles. I'll come down in the same areas with the Skittles. And we'll see how well the Roblox does. We'll see how well the Neos does. And take it from there. Um, I hope you like this type of video. If you do, please hit the like button. Helps me gauge if this video is popular or not. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan. I provide daily cool video uploads of all different kinds of brands of robots. I also do mopping robots. I do unboxings, overviews, extreme testing. You name it. I do everything. So, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys later.